Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to build a basic to-do list app in Android Studio. So as you can see on the screen here, I'm just adding items to a list and we can also remove the items as well. In this tutorial I won't be saving the to-do list information to a database. But if you guys want to see that, make sure you hit a like on the video and leave a comment down below and I'll get around to making part 2. So let's just jump straight into the build here guys. I'm going to first jump to my resource layout file and I want to grab an edit text. So we're just going to grab the plain text one here and drop it onto the bottom of our screen. I'm just going to place it in the left bottom hand corner and then I'm going to put a button in the right hand side of the screen. And now we just need to set the constraints for both of these items because we're using a constraint layout. So I'm just going to put a constraint of two around our button and then maximize the width of our edit text box. Once I've done that, I'm going to grab a horizontal divider just to make it look a bit nicer and place this above the edit text box. And once again, we need to set the constraints for this too and the width. So I'm also going to make this a different color just so it stands out a bit more. After that, we want to jump back to our palette here and I'm going to look for a vertical linear layout. And we're going to drop that onto our screen here and once again, set the constraints. So we want the bottom of it to meet the top of our text box and the rest to meet the parent. So once we have that done, we're going to jump back to our palette again and we're looking for a list view this time. And we can simply just paste our list view inside our linear layout. And we need to give this an ID, so let's just call it list view. After that, we can jump to our button here and I'm just going to change what the text on the button says to add item instead of button. Once that's done, we can jump back to our main activity and we can get into the code. So the first thing that I want to do is create some class variables. So let's create an array adapter and an array list. So I'm just going to create the array list first and it's going to be of type string. And we'll just call this items because this array list is going to hold the various to do list items. Then we need our array adapter, which is going to populate our list view. And after that, we need to define our list view, which we made in our layout resource file earlier. And once that's done, we need to just make all three of these variables private. So I'm just going to write private here and copy and paste it in for all of the variables. After that, we can come down into our onCreate method. And what we need to do next is find our list view by its ID. So we can simply say find by ID and we're going to say r.id.listview. Now I actually forgot to create a button up here so let's go ahead and create a button. So we'll say private button and of course I'm just going to call this button and once we have that done we can jump back down and we can find the button by its ID as well. So once again find view by ID and we're going to say r.id.button. And then we're just going to set an onclick listener for this. So we can say new view here and the code should be auto generated if we just hit enter and inside our on click we're going to create a method called add item. So this is going to be called whenever they click the button. So we're going to click on the little red bulb here and click create method and select in our main activity. So I'm just going to leave this method for now. We can come back later and implement it. So let's continue on in our on create method. So the next thing that I want to do is create our array list for our items. So we can say new array list. And then after that, we need to create our items adapter. So we are going to say is equal to new array adapter. And then we need to pass in the context. We're going to say this. And after that, we need to say android.r.layout. And we're going to use dot simple list item one. And then we have to specify which items we're passing in. So of course, we're just going to use our items that we made. After this, we need to just use the set adapter method on our list view. So we can say list view dot set adapter. And we're going to pass in the adapter that we just created. And after that, I want to create another new method, which is going to be used for deleting our items. So I'm just going to call this setup list view listener. And once again, we can click the red bulb and create the method. So inside here, we're going to use what's known as a long click listener. So if the user holds down their finger on one of the items that it will automatically get deleted from the list. 
So we're looking for set on item long click listener. And then what we need to type in is new adapter view. And once again, you can just hit enter and it should auto generate all of this code for you. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just get the context because we need it for creating a toast message. So inside here, what we want to do is just create a toast that says that the item has been removed. So I'm just going to say toast dot make text. And in here we can just pass in our context. Then we're just going to write a little string here saying that the item has been removed. After that, we have to specify how long we want the message to show for. So it's going to be length long and then we can use the dot show method. So now we have a message telling the user that the item has been removed. So of course the next thing to do is actually remove it. So if you say items.remove and we're going to pass in the integer here called i. So we can just pass that in here. And that should specify the exact position in the list of the item that we want to remove. After that we can simply say items adapter dot notify data set changed to make sure that the adapter is up to date. So that will refresh it and show that the item has been removed. And because we're using the long click listener, we just need to return a boolean. So we're just going to return true. Now let's jump down to our add item method and implement this. So the first thing that we need to do inside here is find our edit text in which the user input will be given. So we're just going to call this input. And of course, we're going to find by ID. And I think I have this set to edit text too. And after that, we're just going to extract the string from this. So we're going to create a string variable called item text. And we can use the input.getText.toString method to actually extract that. And the next thing that I want to do is have a quick check here to make sure that the user has actually typed something in and not just entering an empty string. So we can say item text dot equals empty string and we're checking for not. So we're going to put in our exclamation mark here. And then inside this if statement, I'm just going to say items adapter dot add items text, which is going to add our string to our adapter. And then after that, we can just set the text of our edit text back to empty so that it looks like the user page is kind of refreshed. So let's go ahead and just do that. So we can simply say input.setText and we're just going to type in an empty string here. Now we need to create our else block. So we're going to type else and our brackets here. And what we're going to do is create a message to say that the user can't add a empty string. So I'm just going to create a toast here and we're going to say toast.makeText. We need to get the application context first. After that we can type in our string and I'm just going to say please enter text so that the user knows that they cannot type in an empty string. And then we need to specify how long we want this message to show first. We'll just say length.long and of course the dot show method. So that's pretty much it for the code. Let's just run the app and see how it looks. So if I open up the app here, as you can see, we can type in stuff into our edit text here. And if I hit the add item button, it should add it to our list, which we can see it does. So let's just add a few more items here. So I'm just going to add to do and some more random text. And then I'll show you how to delete an item by just holding down your finger on the exact item that you want to remove. So as you can see, we got our toast message here at the bottom saying item removed. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. But as I said earlier, if you are interested in learning how to persist this data to a database so that every time we open the app, you can get the data that you stored previously. Uh, I can make a part two if you're interested. Just make sure you leave a comment below and a like on the video. And most of all, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.